Hi. Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, this is Martin um, here, and nice to meet you. I'm Megan. Hi, Megan. Uh, Matthew, is your uh, microphone yeah. on? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Let me know if you hear like some feedback from my computer. My headphones aren't working right now. Okay. Okay. And I think we're just waiting for Chapman. Okay. And uh, my question to you guys is: Do you mind if I record this for the rest of my team? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Excellent. Yeah. How's uh, how's stuff going? I mean, you, are you guys in session or are you guys sequestered at home? Uh, today was actually our first day of spring quarter, but um, I'm actually at home in the Bay Area because um, I lived on on-campus housing, so they kind of kicked us off if you lived on campus. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all classes are online now. Um, yeah. So at home. Is that working mm -hmm. out well, or, or does that do a lot of disruption to the program, or...? Uh, we just started uh, kind of just playing it by ear right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it'll be fine because we've done like virtual projects before, online classes, so we'll see how it goes. Is it also the case that some yeah. people like who got kicked off campus don't really have a place to go, so they get ended up on the street or something like that? Or I heard some stories like that for other places. Yeah, I think with UCI, they... They, at, in the beginning, they strongly suggested that you went back home, and then once the situation got worse, you basically had to have uh, a really strong reasoning as to why you would have to stay on campus. So if you had absolutely nowhere to go, like if you were an international student mm -hmm. or something, um, then they did allow you to stay on I campus. See. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Let's see what's happening. Uh, so how is it looking in Kansas? Is it uh everyone is also quarantined and everything? Yeah, so, we've got um. Uh, yep, here we have pretty much kind of like uh, quarantine, basically stay at home kind of order. So some st mm -hmm. stores are like I haven't never seen this. So I actually come from Poland. I came about thirty five years ago from Poland, and there used to be empty mm -hmm. shelves in Poland, and it's the first time in my life since that time that I've seen empty shelves in supermarkets in the U.S. Which was no. which is pretty yeah. amazing, um, but yeah, people are working from home here. I mean, we work we work at our campus here. We we've got a facility. We've got thirty acres, so we've got basically mm -hmm. kind of like home office kind of deal. Um, but that's that's how we operate. So we've got this facility. We've got the workshop and living space. It's like a small campus here. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, let's see. I, you guys kind of how do I get make everybody show up? Oh, there we are. There we are. I, I see you guys again. I clicked on myself. I couldn't see you guys. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 That's that's cool. How long have you guys been working mm -hmm. with uh, with 180 in DC? Uh, uh, this was my third year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same with Same. Matthew. Yeah. Same. Yeah. So uh, Megan and I joined our freshman year of college, and we're now um, third years. Yeah. So. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, all the other uh, um, members joining us joined around their freshman year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was pretty amazed to see like how you guys scale to you got whatever, like a hundred or so different chapters worldwide. That's pretty amazing. You know, we're trying to get the first mm -hmm. replication of our work going elsewhere. I mean, part of our work is actually setting up chapters in different locations too. We have, we're not there yet, but your, yours oh, is yeah. a good, good model for scaling. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, I listened to uh, the TED talk. Yeah. About uh, university ecology, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm majoring in uh, informatics, mm. so I'm kind of familiar with like the open source model and mm -hmm. uh, you know, just like seeing how like a lot of like pro in the computer science world, like um, we would basically like uh, embrace open source and see how the scalability can really go in terms of like in other other aspects. Yeah, yeah, and it's a lot of the same principles can translate to hardware, but the other thing is it's also so much more difficult. It's like a million times more difficult. Yeah. Like it's not like a thousand; it's like a million times. I must say, uh, it's it's difficult. But yeah, uh, that's the challenge that we're working on. Hi, Chapman. 
Hi. I'm marching. Nice to meet you. Okay, awesome. So I guess we can start then some Chapman's here. So basically, okay. um, we've heard just like a little bit about the situation from um, organized by Keshin. Um, uh -huh. Just to give you a brief introduction of who we are again. So I'm Megan. I'm the president of the UC Irvine branch for 180. And uh, Matthew and Chapman can introduce themselves. Yeah, so I'm Matthew. I'm an uh, engagement manager in, in this organization. Mm -hmm. I'm an engagement man manager as well, and I help Matthew with the projects. Yeah, mm -hmm. engagement manager. So, so the, are you, so Matthew and Chapman, are you, or are, are all three of you going to be working with me on this? Or, or like what kind of role division um, is there? To be had. So usually, yeah. um, engagement managers are like logic leads, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. uh, a group of consultants that would be within our project, and we'll like guide them and try to like help help them with um, just analysis and problem solving. And uh, usually, we act as like the main point of contact between our team and you as a client. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the team is. Um... So you guys are the engagement managers and president, but the team that's actually the, a bunch more people. How many or how many people do you have on the team? Uh, we'll probably have uh, another three or four individuals. Some of our um, students, of course, are still trying to figure out their schedule with uh, everything that's going on. But we have uh, interest from at least uh, four individuals. Okay. Mm -hmm. That you pitched this particular project to, or just 180 DC in general? Sorry, could you repeat the question? Uh, three or four people interested that are interested in participating in 180 DC in general or on this project in specific? Oh, no, just in, on this project uh, specifically. There are already uh, consultants on our team, and uh, yeah. we usually have about one or two projects a quarter. Um, but mm -hmm. with the situation going on, we some yeah. of the students just aren't working this quarter um, just because they, have, they don't really have the means to, yeah. OK, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so basically, um, yeah, so your main point of contact will be Chapman and Matthew as they'll be okay. overseeing the project and the other consultants. I act as just another resource for okay. uh, Chapman and Matthew as well as other consultants. And I do, uh, mainly in my position I, is I do most of the client acquisition and the consultant training. So yeah. um, kind of after this, I will still be like CC'd on the emails and stuff like that, but as far as specific um, project details and problems, that will be mostly directed to Chapman and Matthew. Cool, cool. And mm -hmm. so Chapman and Matthew, are you guys gonna be actually engaged in the like the solutions creation or are you pretty much the communications, like uh, basically the interaction part? Uh, both, we both. do um, have like our own parts in the project in terms of solutions creation but um, in terms of what you say or like what you would want we communicate that to the rest of the team yeah okay so uh, the, the normal project cycle we usually it's like um, like a sort of like a project proposition meeting just seeing if like mm -hmm. uh, seeing the problem what's and trying to like understand what it is and just seeing if we can have the capabilities yeah in the project and then the next meeting would be like with other people within the team, so the consultants to be able to ask you questions, okay, and just get to know your organization and you know the problem definition and the project yeah. scope, yeah. And so that after that, we will kind of make a framework and what types of avenues you want to look into. So we usually make a something called like a problem, you know, like a issue tree. Mm -hmm. So a tree diagram with a bunch of different. Uh, uh, topics we want to look into, do research into, and that will be main approach for the project. And we'll usually present that with you through like uh, weekly calls. You know what research we've been doing, so you can provide mm -hmm. us with feedback if you think we're in the right direction or you want us to go somewhere else. Yeah. And then, uh, mid project, we usually have something called like a prioritization matrix meeting. Mm -hmm. So we'll show you basically like all the research we've done. And we would estimate like what impact each of these preliminary recommendations would have, and you know based on that we will like chart it in a sort of like matrix graph, and you can decide which avenues you want to like m focus more into detail in the final research, and or which avenues you want us to not look at at all basically. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then after that, we would just do, the team would finalize their research and we'll provide you with our final recommendation. Yeah. And the scope or the length of time would be like a three to four month project. Is that like a semester long project or? Um, so we are on a quarter basis. So mm -hmm. that is the 10 week ten project. Weeks. So if, okay. yeah, um, if it does so happen that it needs to be longer, um, there would need to be a significant break because we would in summer and then it will start up again until fall. Mm -hmm. um, but most of our projects do run on a 10 week basis and we do complete it within 10 weeks. So I don't think it would be a huge issue unless um, if it is a huge project then we can look into splitting it into two separate uh, entities. Yeah, and just with that, um, with a service, like the service fee of the $1,000, is that like if the project carries over to that, would that be like another uh, payment or would that be included in the same project if, if the project needs to run longer, just for my awareness? Um, probably be included in the same payment. Um, uh, that contribution already is, is um, definitely very generous. And um, if yeah. we just do stay on longer, it's just something that um, if you do feel like our work was even better than you can make your own contribution as well. That's mm -hmm. just to help us continue running as a club in general. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, have, so have you all, Chapman, mm -hmm. I guess, and Megan, have you seen my TED talk as well? Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew said he did. Have you taken a look at that? Or? I have not gotten a, uh, a chance to watch it, but I have been doing a little bit, uh, just like general research on the, on the website and the, mm -hmm. um, and the steam camp in general. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, please mm -hmm. do look at that. It's four minutes. It's a quick, quick overview of what what we're up to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Of course. Okay, and I was looking uh, when Keshin first brought this project to our attention. He um, just mentioned very briefly that you were looking into some sort of market strategy um, for the Steam Camp. So, what exactly would that? entail do you think yeah so so it's an interesting thing let's back up a little because right now pretty much like all the work on the steam camps it's pretty much on hold mm -hmm. due to the virus and all mm -hmm. that so we we're planning yes. on like pretty much a monthly event but right now i don't know when we're going to get back to it so that's the first thing mm -hmm. and and the marketing is yes definitely for the steam camps but there's a whole more like an ecology of products that we work on it's it's really about engaging the greater public in open source development of products so the steam camps are a way that we train people to have the design thinking and the tools to do that to, to collaborate in an open source way so that's our main uh, well it's um uh, it's a thing we're running right now as a as a revenue model but the other things around it the big thing that that leads into is the incentive challenge so we were planning and once again i don't know what's going to happen with that but we were planning for september mm -hmm. beginning of september to launch a big challenge so actually something like on the order of like two hundred fifty thousand dollar prize that we would fundraise to do a collaborative contest to build the world's first open source 3d printed professional grade cordless drill so it's a challenge to develop a real product and why the steam camps are in place is that we can keep training people so they can participate in a contest like that. So that's um, aimed at like a realistic way to develop products as opposed to proprietary mm -hmm. research and development. We're trying to say, okay, you can actually do this. You can create an open business model where it's not, it's really converting the the situation where there's like four major manufacturers worldwide of of these cordless cordless drills and we're saying okay mm -hmm. well let's do okay. these small open source micro factories in many many communities around the world where now we can distribute that production for real businesses so real quality controlled industrial grade products so it's a very it's it's a huge shift it's like we're literally thinking about it as a shift from a proprietary economy to a, an economy based on open collaboration like for for the material mm -hmm. side not just not just software so with that there's mm -hmm. also some other elements that i just want to bring in as a background for because i, I talked about marketing but the idea is also mm -hmm. we are interested in setting up clubs at universities so basically clubs that are aligned in the whole whole process that we do the open collaborative design and also at high schools and and even elementary schools. So the marketing part would be 
on one side we're thinking it's simply the makers right the people that mm -hmm. already are likely to do this kind of the, the builders the people who already kind of are producing things or maybe doing it as a hobby uh, but we're trying to shift that from not only the maker community because that's like most makers are pretty much hobbyists they don't really get into production they've got other jobs they're you know <laughs> so so we're trying to get the program into universities as well and schools so that people start thinking about this collaborative development process as a real uh, possibility for mass like we talk about mass creation of right livelihood so jobs like people mm -hmm. that can actually do this for real um, as opposed to a hobby now so why do I bring this up it's just to show the the greater framework of what we're trying to work on but the marketing of like filling up the steam camps right now which are our main thing is a nine day intensive training where you have four days of general skills and then five days where we actually work on a real project and also across multiple locations mm -hmm. so that we're actually getting real like real solid development happening but we haven't succeeded at the numbers we've we've run like three events at the same time like in the last two events we didn't have too many people we had like three people registered at each event uh, so mm -hmm. we need the numbers to go up to like 12 or 24 people per location and our goal is to get like 12 or 24 locations at the same time so that you literally have hundreds of people that are doing solid development and they're all collaborating and sharing the files and uploading and using wikis and collaborative techniques that we're developing or have developed to make this possible so it's a, it's a pretty unique thing uh, but yeah, like the main the main challenge right now is just getting the word out there, getting the numbers, getting a marketing strategy where we can mm -hmm. we can get people. Because I think the feedback has been yeah, this is pretty good. Like people that do hear about it, there a lot of feedback has been yeah, it's a pretty amazing program. But we're we've pretty much tapped out all our internal audiences, so we really need to scale the marketing of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you classify your um, target audience? Yeah, I mean, that's a thing where we've been struggling a lot because the people that come to our workshops come from many disciplines. It's like it's software people who want to get practical skills. It's makers. It's survivalists who want to have access to like their own manufacturing equipment. It's people uh, of all kinds, like environmentally conscious people. There's a lot of sectors, but I think if we try to simplify that, I think makers is definitely one category of people. That's that's like a clear, clear, definite category. And maybe like we say, OK, well, let's just focus on making sure that every single maker out there can can uh, know about this. But then at the same time, because the, the vision of the whole organization and what we do is is much more comprehensive. I mean, we do get people from all over all over, like like, for example, university students who are highly idealistic and are really attracted mm -hmm. to the mission and vision because I think they're really attracted by the TED talk and see like, wow, this is the most amazing thing. Uh, so those kinds of people, um, there's makers and college, college student idealists who, um, who still see the, a lot of possibility for a much different world and an improved world and all of that kind of a thing. Because after that, like after the college level, people pretty much get so into the proprietary way of life and patents and competition that mm -hmm. people are like, well, how am I going to make a living? They don't catch on to the philosophy and kind of miss them. But I don't know, does that answer the question of the target mm -hmm. market? Or? Yeah. So, so yeah. To summarize uh, what we've talked about so far. Um, yeah. So steam camps are basically you know to get people interested and you know give them the skills they need to um you know yeah. build these sort of uh, machines and hardware devices and then um after the steam camps uh, mm -hmm. there's competition uh that open source ecology provides so groups of people can you know design things and for the competition and mm -hmm. um collaboratively create designs together as an open source sort of model yeah um, uh, just one one little addition like they get the skills mm -hmm. to build things but the bi actually the bigger skill is how do you collaborate like how do you work effectively um, as a large mm -hmm. team because that's mm -hmm. like especially like right now with the COVID thing there's a lot of different efforts but there's a not a lot of coordination so that kind of right. mindset of we call it collaborative literacy 
how do you actually mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. that you can do more and how and what are the actual tools and the mechanics of how you do that that's that's i think the bigger part um than just the design let me see than just the machines machine design it's collaboration methods yep mm -hmm. let me see and then um how do these competitions run because this is open source so yeah I don't think it, from what my experience with open source is totally no one winner so yeah. how, how would the competitions yeah. work so that's a good question so so uh, if you look at Hero X, which is an offshoot of the X Prize, it's a um, competition platform. Now, I want to point out one thing: like every single contest, and I've looked at in there, HeroX.com, it's a competition, meaning that people there's like a hundred teams that will participate. You know, say a big project that's got like a hundred thousand or more funding, they'll get like a thousand or more people participating, but they're all competing with each other. So in our our contest, first of all, people will be collaborating. You're supposed to download another person's stuff. You're supposed to so-called steal other people's stuff. It's collaboration. It's truly open collaboration, and you're encouraged to upload. Whereas in all the other contests, it's like you're disqualified if you cheat, meaning that you take other people's stuff. So we're completely rewriting that rule. Now, how are we going to do the prize? So we're thinking about like top 10 or top maybe like a couple of grand prizes, like big prizes, and then a bunch of other smaller prizes where where you you award not just like one big winner, but but much more uh, more winners. And there's enough money that you can have maybe like, you know, maybe like a 50,000, like a couple of, maybe like 50,000 grand prize, 10, 10, 10, and then like a bunch of small, like a thousand dollar prizes. Because the prize is going to be 250K. So it's going to be some solid change to, to play with that we're going to fundraise for that. Um, but okay, how do you do the, the enterprise at the end? So what we're going to do is part of the competition is to create some of the enterprise assets. Like how do we market this? How do we actually sell this? to the big box store. How do you open up a small business producing this, like a small micro factory? Because not only will the design of the cordless drill be included, but also the machines, like the 3D printers and maybe some some other tools, but definitely 3D printers um, and plastic recycling machinery because the 3D print, the, the challenge is gonna be that we're gonna make this cordless drill from waste plastic. So you're gonna have this small micro factory, but the idea is that um, we help people get into business and they can either go like on their own to, to produce these or they can work with us like and we call it an open franchise. Basically, the model is that we can train you. We can give you our brand open source ecology. We can help you market. We can help you uh, the, with the business support so that we literally have a bunch of people out there all over the world. Like our goal is to have 50 to 100 people produce these as these open source franchises. So they're making money and we would take a franchise fee that's manageable. We're thinking like at the end of the day, something like a 12% fee or something, but we contribute all that money to further product development, to keeping that common base of design improving, like product improvement and stuff like that. So it's a synergy, but the idea is that now we've transferred the the concept of 80% of the wealth going to all the investors to 80% the people that are actually doing this, the producers, the the en entrepreneurs that are doing this. So we're trying to shift the economics here. But the idea is, yes, we uh, people will um, be able to run an enterprise with this. So the prize is one thing, but it's not really about the prize because in an incentive challenges, it frequently occurs that people put much more effort than the prize. The prize is kind of like an incentive but for us, the real benefit is, okay, now you can make a living with this. You can start a business doing this, you know, say producing like 30 of them or 100 per month and um, making enough money to make a good living on. Let's see? Yep. Um, so then um, I think uh, Keshin said that you're interested in, a, in, in product strategy as well. Yeah. Um, down like what yeah. type of products like do you want us to help you with like the steam camps or things yeah. like that see that's a big question for us because we we're, we're involved on so many levels like, the steam camp is an education product so but at the same time we build 3d printers we can train somebody how to run uh, to to make 3d printers for a living like we sell the kits right now we're also thinking of 
like if because I, I start thinking a lot about mass like, like unemployment after the covid I'm thinking about how do we create a lot of jobs but one thing is like starting up 3d printing online businesses too like we can we can spend some effort to basically distribute that model as something we can teach people to do because we've got excellent printers like we uh, to tell you about the printer like we pride ourselves on it being it's like the lowest unique part count in the world it's about one half to one third lower parts it's scalable so you can make a printer that's got like a small print bed or you can go to like a like a meter print bed so it's the only printer out there that's that you can scale and that's literally easy to build like all the other printers even if they're open source you can't really produce them because they use a lot of specialized parts we focus on really really reducing the barriers to entry so that's another possibility we can we can train people to either produce these printers or start businesses producing parts with those printers so when i say product strategy yes one side is the steam camps which teach you how to uh, design stuff and collaborate but what about the other sides like actually selling the 3d printers or information products like online courses or efforts where we get together to create like the the online store of open source parts p open source things where you can build them in your micro factory so for example like these okay by the way see these headphones they're 3d printed they're their product um mm -hmm. you can make anything you can do like uh you know headlamps you could make like vent like face masks like air purifiers i mean 3d printing is pretty robust like you can make belts like belts for drive like power drive belts plumbing fittings like you can make tons of stuff so it's a simple idea to say okay mm -hmm. well why don't we get a bunch of people together and get the product development happening so we make this essentially kind of like an etsy or open source version of amazon where all the product design is collaborative mm -hmm. and this is the challenge the challenge here is that we need enough bodies to make that happen like so far the challenge has been getting enough people to collaborate on these things and that's why you want to mm -hmm. train the people to have those skills of collaboration because we're finding that the trained people like people who know how to use open source software how to collaborate like literally the collaboration part that's a big deal so i'm kind of rambling on here but i'm saying yes the product strategy is important because we can be doing the steam camps but there's all these other things like producing the machines getting collaborative efforts to develop products so yes i could use mm -hmm. some definitely some help on clarifying okay we can be doing like really go off into making printers and and spend a lot of time with that we haven't like i think the steam camps are important because they fill that need of building our development team like imagine like for example if we had the steam camps built and had like thousands of people already trained and a community built up then like in this COVID crisis we can take okay like let's design a respirator a challenge and like a week later we'll have it all done because you know imagine the power of thousands of people knowing how to collaborate because right now there's thousands of people working on it but there's not clear mm -hmm. mechanisms of collaboration so uh, i'm explaining why uh the steam camps i think are pretty important because they can fuel the <laughs> skilled people the collaboratively literate people that can actually make this project really succeed because our, our vision is pretty uh, we have lofty visions on what we want to do so product strategy for getting there is is a big deal for us too like right now i'm thinking it, it is the steam camps and that's definitely what we're doing the steam camp followed by incentive challenges but where do the university chapters f fit in where do like the the idea mm -hmm. that you can convert a, a classroom into a collaborative design experience like should we be going into the the schools to teach uh the the steam teachers the stem teachers how to do this to build up whole forces of of students that can do this so there's a lot of options and so sh to put it shortly product strategy would be we could use help on that too like i would say definitely mm -hmm. okay so it sounds like with it like product strategy and market strategy those would be two pretty different projects is there one that you would want us to focus on yeah. over the other because within our 10-week time frame it yeah. doesn't seem like we could tackle both 
Yeah. No, it's true. I think the at this point, since we've got the product, the product of the the Steam Camp going forward, I think we should focus on on developing the marketing strategy for that. I think that's pretty clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that could potentially lead into the product strategy as as well um, in the in the future as using some of the similar tactics to as part of product strategy marketing also is part of that. So yeah. it could lead into that in the future. So I think that would be a good place to start. Um, yeah. yeah, I'd say so. I'm trying to think as far as strategy. Yeah, so I think we've definitely um, market strategy is something that we've definitely done before. Um, uh, for different organizations, it's uh, usually it's like market strategy tied with something else. So for this, it seems like you are seeking more community engagement and just getting um, what you guys do out there, and then hopefully that will build out and have more um, participants at uh, your thing, your events such as the Steam Camp. Yeah. And that's something similar to what we've done before in that. Uh, getting or doing market strategy that's aimed at fundraising and just getting more engagement out in the community. Yeah. So was there also was there a specific um, besides a specific demographic? Was there a specific um, community that you were looking at, or just all over the U.S. or just or just worldwide? Or it's worldwide because. Um, okay. For example, the last one of the last team camps we had one that was happening at the same time in Germany. The last one I did okay. was actually New Zealand. So, yeah, it's worldwide. It's makers mm -hmm. who are anywhere in the world. People who want to mm -hmm. start up open source micro factories. And that's, you know, the marketing thing. Like, I like the word open source micro factory, but I'm, I'm not sure if that's the... I think it's pretty good. It's a decent thing. But, I mean, some of the... In terms of how we, what do we call it and how do we get that message? What are the keywords we need to use and all that? That's part of the game here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so what's like the success criteria for um, this project? Well, I mean, it would be that we fill <laughs> for what time frame? What, um, for... It's it's up to you what, what the time frame is. So, for example, like sometimes some clients say, I want to raise. Like for example, we had a client that did, I want fundraising strategy. So she said she wanted to raise five hundred grand in three years. Mm -hmm. For example, it's up to the client to make that so that we can, and so we know what kind of like what we're working with. So, uh, yeah. end goal, you know, how long. So, because that, that influences our recommendations because um, mm -hmm. go for something that's like, you know, more uh, affordable, if it's more long term or if it's very short term, you might have to do something that's, you know, less affordable, more expensive, and more costly and hard yeah. to do. Yeah. I mean, I would say 24 by 24 or 12 by 12. So 12 events or 24 events with 12 to 24 people at each event. Mm -hmm. Like when we have that, then the, yeah, the economics work out in that. Like if we populate each event with a minimum of 12 people, then we can mm -hmm. be cash flow positive and, and do what we need and contribute some money to f further development even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 12 by 12 is 144, 24 by 24 is like 500 or so. Um, but we're looking at those numbers as if we have, so say you have the five project days in the Steam Camp, which is nine days total, then mm -hmm. yeah, like if you have 100 to 500 people working on something in a very deliberate way, in five days you can do a lot. So for example, well, the, the idea there is after each Steam Camp, we pretty much release a product that can be marketable or productized. I mean, as close to productization as possible. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the idea. But it, it and needs then, the bodies to, to make it happen. And, mm -hmm. and you said right now the Steam Camp is on hold because of everything that's going on. Yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, and yeah. you don't have any ideas. So would this 100 that's, to 500 people, would that be for when the Steam Camp yeah. um, yeah. Resumes in yeah. the future or? Yeah. And, okay. the, and the schedule is, is like unknown given the uncertainty right now, right? Yeah, of course. Um, of course. So, how do we frame that? Like, I, I guess the idea would be that we have a strategy that once we're able to deploy it, probably on given, okay, say we have 
um, probably like three month planning three months cycles months. for an event that would be 12 by 12, 12, 12 mm -hmm. locations, 12 people each. So if we can develop a protocol or this, 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 these are the steps we have to go through and this is the cost involved for if we wanted to populate 12 events with 12 people, this is what we need to do, how we do it mm -hmm. and what we would need to pay to make that happen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, that definitely helps us uh, in terms of like an implementation plan to create something along like a three month timeline, just be able to uh, employ it whenever um, the camp do resume. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we have gotten a lot of really good information that we can uh, share with our consultants and mm -hmm. we definitely want to get their perspective on uh, what they think because they are obviously going to have um, their mm -hmm. own opinions and about how this might work and mm -hmm. might definitely be more helpful. Um, did you have any further questions for us about um, how this might work or? Yeah. So the other team members, what are they, what are their um, majors or what are their skill sets? Yeah. So um, I'm trying to think who was interested. Uh, we have two individuals who are interested in their uh, business admin majors. Um, mm -hmm. They have, they're on the, their second year, so they haven't chosen their emphasis yet, but mm -hmm. I think one is interested in more the finance side and another one she's also interested in uh, informatics as well. Mm -hmm. We have a CS major um, and then we have another business student who is leaning more towards marketing. So we have a couple uh, different perspectives working there that I think Mm -hmm. are applicable to the project where as far as marketing and that uh, the uh, CS and informatics majors uh, have more background on on uh, what exactly your organization does. So I think it will work out pretty well. What about the, uh, so you have consultants through 180DC, the people that actually consult you as the student team? Or how does that work? I heard from mm -hmm. Keshen that you've got people from different companies advising you. Um, we have a... Uh, an academic advisor on campus as mm -hmm. far as um, if we do need extra help outside mm -hmm. of our um, our specific UC Irvine organization then mm -hmm. we can reach out to other members within 180DC whether it be other branches or people from the exec executive team such as Keshin or our um, DGO which is some the individual that oversees us um, or that is assigned to us through 180DC from yeah. from UC Irvine or is that from the 180 DC organization? Uh, he's from the 180 DC organization. Yeah. yeah. Do you, do mm -hmm. you guys have any access to cons like say there's you know say we need some expertise on a particular topic? Can you also tap? Because because Kashina was mentioning about like McKinsey or whatever like uh, other consulting companies that provide mentoring to the students. Do you have access to any people like that? Say we run into any questions that we might have that need more expertise, or um, so all of our training is through um, McKinsey uh, McKinsey training that they've been put through when uh, they first joined us consultants there. Um, so that is how that's most of our connections to there. We don't have a specifically assigned uh, McKinsey mm -hmm. expert, um, but if there are like gaps in our, we do have. Uh, access to like their research packets and things like that so we can look into those if there are gaps in our um, research or if we're at, at a loss mm -hmm. and as far yeah. as uh, so do do students learn like say you know how do you go about the research process like say you've got say IT or some of the business students I mean if their if their specialty is not like marketing strategy how do they how do you guys learn mm -hmm. about it um that's kind of the Part of the point of the club is to also learn how to mm -hmm. uh, work on different projects where if you're not in your comfort zone, you're not in your expertise. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're very lucky that we do have a lot of research um, uh, sources through the university. We have access to a lot of different databases that we can use and we try and teach basic research skills um, mm -hmm. in the beginning to the consultants as well as in their, uh, in their classes we learn research skills as well mm -hmm. um so if it's something yep. that the individual's not well versed in um so say like we have uh so one of our 
consultant to, the, to computer science major, he might not be as well versed in marketing, but we do have business students who are more geared towards marketing. So we help each other out yeah. when it comes to gaps in our knowledge. Yep. And as far as like, say, say there's a marketing strategy of, okay, how do you do like SEO or whatever? Like, would you mm -hmm. actually do the, the part of implementing any of it? Or would it be providing guidance on how for our, our team to implement it? Yeah, so we would be providing guidance on how to implement it. So um, along with our recommendations, we couple it with an implementation plan. And that is um, how long it would take to implement the recommendations, the manpower, uh, and all of that, all of those um, operational details. And but we do don't actually go into the organization to do it. Mm -hmm. And how do you, like, how do you gauge, like, I mean, you basically research that, like, okay, say without having actually done that, like, we're going to be tasked with actually executing on it, like, without having executed mm -hmm. it, how do we know it works? It's it's like, is there any, how, how do you assess yeah. how well it's going to work? Uh, there oh. runs a risk with every um, recommendation we provide. So we provide a risk analysis in terms of what could potentially go wrong, some okay. mitigation plan. And then we could also do like conditional implementation plans where it's like, if this doesn't happen, then do this instead. Do you think yeah. that we can end up with like, because there's a concept of cost of customer acquisition, like, would you guys be able to pin that down that, okay, in order for this to happen, you will have to spend X on marketing or these things like you guys can pretty much nail that down to a reasonable figure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, when we do, um, when we do like before we do the um, prioritization matrix, mm -hmm. we calculate something called ROIs, return on implementations, and we basically, um, based on our research, we will like yeah. um, kind of like look and to see like how much it'll cost to acquire, for example, one person to go to the Steam camp using this, you know, this strategy. So maybe I don't know using uh, the social media strategy. How much would it cost to get like one person? Ten, we can like kind of um, deductively mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. estimate, give an estimate how much it would cost. Of course, like everything is sort of um, yeah. everything is kind of theoretical because it hasn't been implemented yet. But yeah. we try to keep figures as conservatively as possible, just to be on the safe side. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that sounds quite reasonable. That sounds like that would be very useful. And then, um, as far as like, say we we need to create some assets like. Well, right now we pretty much have the advertising on the front of our wiki. We've got our our main website. We just use social media. But if we do, if we need to do other things like, you know, get additional software, some other other assets that we need to create, like how do we go about them? You would recommend that okay, now you need to do get this and this in place to make this happen, or do you you, you would provide such recommendations yeah. or? Yeah, if we do in our research, if we do find that um, acquiring some sort of something else would be a good recommendation for the market strategy, we yeah. will provide reasoning as to why, and then an implementation as to how you would first acquire that and within the timeline that you want it. Okay. Yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense. All right. Yeah, like mm -hmm. uh, our computers, especially uh, our computer science major. He's. He's very good at sort of like looking at different systems and how to implement them. Okay. So like last project, you know, uh, our client was already using SharePoint and SurveyMonkey to get like uh, to get responses and measure their social impact. So, but they just needed some help on how to like to implement that further and optimize their use of it. So he looked into that, you know, mm -hmm. to see, uh, you know, provide an in-depth implementation plan of, you know, okay. how can improve your use of this so that's what kind of kind of what it would look like or if we recommend you use you know adwords or something we'll look in you know we won't just say i'll oh, use adwords we'll look into like what step by step what you should do to uh yeah because i can tell you right now for example we do have adwords but we're not really using it because we're we don't really know how to do that effectively but uh, so, for example, for AdWords, you'd be able to provide, okay, here's like explicitly very detailed instructions of what, what needs to happen or stuff like that? or Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would all be part of the implementation plan. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and then um, as far as just one one request, since we're open source ecology, can, 
can you guys just make a note that we'd like, if possible, use as many open source tools as possible? Like, for example, the computer science guy, is he, is he well versed in open source? I mean, if, if he's in computer science, probably, um, I would mm -hmm. assume that that's not a new, <laughs> yeah, everything in open, in uh, software is pretty much open source. But yeah, like if we can select tools that are as open source as possible, like that's just a request since, since that's, yeah. that's our brand. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds good. Of course. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can bring this information back to our consultants and okay. see what they think about it as well. Um, I'm sure they'll be very interested about uh, this project. They are. We've told them a little bit about it, and they seem very excited already. Yeah, excellent. Um, so we'll contact you back. Um, we Keshin already has the contract drawn up, so we mm -hmm. can send that your way as well. You can look at it, see if you have any other questions. Um, so yeah, we'll be in further contact probably by, uh, you should receive an email probably t tomorrow, yeah. So we would be planning on pretty much like, w is this weekly meetings to continue progress or? Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, with our clients would, it's up to the client, but we would prefer to have like weekly calls, check-in calls. Mm -hmm. so, so every week we do like, um, we do research and we provide you with a, with a deliverable and we just go over that with you in the call and get your feedback and you know you, so you and it's for transparency reasons too so if you, you see that you want us to look into more of this aspect of mm -hmm. something yeah you don't think you can implement whatever we're looking into in that moment it's better to tackle that early on than you know in the final recommendation and you know okay. you just say oh I actually can't implement that okay. so you just so you can like make sure we're going in the right direction you have con some control of where we're going at in this project that's excellent uh should we be setting up a, like a weekly meeting or will we play it by ear to as far as when the next meeting uh, is or so usually we prefer to have like a scheduled like yeah. weekly meeting so for example last last project yeah, every friday at 4 p.m so just something so it's like regular so um, yeah yeah and can we can next yeah, can we call. do something like? Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, can we set set something for Friday, like a regular time on Friday then? Like say like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll, so we, we can have to see when our consultants are free as well. Okay. Um, but okay. they should probably be free on Friday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Good. All right. It was so great meeting you. Thank you so much for taking the time to share about your organization with us. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll be in touch and look forward to working with you guys. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Take care. Bye. 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 Mm -hmm.